here is Draymond Green on the Draymond Green show on not changing the way he plays, even with the text and all that. Listen to this. Nobody's paying to watch this stuff to see guys get thrown out of the game and you not see the game you want to watch. Like, and so I understand and agree. Like, yes, if there is something egregious, I'm going to get thrown out. As we know, I, I, nobody's sparing me. I never goes into it or after my first tech, like, oh, man, I got to tread carefully or walk lightly just to stay in the game. Like, because if I'm going to tread carefully and walk lightly, then I may as well get thrown out anyway because that's not going to help my team win. So I have to be me. Straight talk wireless, no contract, no compromise. So I'm taking off my analyst hat key and I'm putting on my player cap for a second if I'm the Boston Celtics. And Draymond Green is right. You know, nobody wants to see players get kicked out of the NBA Finals or ejected for technical fouls. So if I'm Marcus Smart, if I'm Robert Williams, the first thing I'm doing in the first quarter is I'm putting Draymond Green on his ass. I'm putting him on his back. I'm hitting him with a back screen. I'm hitting him with a flare screen. I'm hitting him at Burton Lee when he goes up for a rebound with an elbow. I'm doing something, and I've heard Pat Riley say this before back in the day. Sometimes you got to meet force with force. And I'm setting the energy right from the top and the tempo and the pace of the game that it doesn't matter what the hell you do, Draymond. Game three is drastically different than game two. We are setting the tone for game two. And that tone is each and every play, your ass is going to be looking at me with your back on the ground because that's where you belong. That's just how you have to come at it. Now, that may get me a tech. That may give me a hard foul, but it's just setting a different tone for game three and what it needs to be for the Boston Celtics. Well, now you're getting ready to play right into Draymond Green's hand. Is it, though? You, you get, yeah, it is, because you're playing his game. You're doing something authentically that you uh, uh, unauthentic that you would never do. You would never do that. Maybe there's one guy. Maybe, maybe there's a Marcus Smart that it does something along those lines. But you, 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 that's one person. There's five people on the court. And Draymond Green is going to agitate five different guys, not just one. So you playing right into Draymond's hands because your focus now is on me. And if you're doing that, I got you right where I want you because you you so worried about trying to get underneath my skin. I'm the one with the with the with the tough mind and the strength to withstand whatever you do. You not. And so when you start to do those sort of things, you you falling right into Draymond's hands, man. You just got to play your game and not worry about what he does. Mm. You don't have to fight fire with fire as far as the physicality go. If you're a physical player, be a physical player. If you all of a sudden, Jay, I don't know, who who would be non-physical on, on the Boston Celtics, so to speak? Whoever that guy Jason is. Jason Tatum would be not. He's not like a physical dude or Jalen okay, Brown. Okay, so, so Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown, if you start to try to play in the Draymond Green's hands, you're going to be all shook and all looking at something totally different. But key, that's that why, just doing you? That's, a, that's where I think basketball and football are a little bit different, though, and that's why I said Marcus Smart, the first name that came out of my mouth, because I think that sets a different – Marcus Smart can absorb that type of play. That's who he is. In other words, they got a dude that's like that on the is. team. Yes. yes. And that's just like Draymond, yeah, he, Draymond is so that important. dude. But key, Draymond's that dude on Golden State, yes. and he recognized I got to impose that part of me on game two. Yeah, but, and Jay's point seems to be now their Draymond, their guy like that needs to do the same. But if you are without Marcus Smart for whatever reason, because the referees are watching both now, they understand that the Boston Celtics got, I don't know, bullied in game two and in game three on their own home court, they may try to come back and retaliate to some degree with some sort of toughness. So they're watching the green. But key, There's no question but about key, it. But key in basketball, I can do that in so many different ways, man. Like, I, I can say if, if Draymond Green's on the ball and he's pressuring the ball and I come up from the weak side and I have his man, like, Jason, say he's guarding whoever, and I have him run him really hard into me, he doesn't see me coming, boom, with a back check, like a back screen, and he's on the ground, okay, you're on the ground. Hear. You can get a hard, hard foul on him without it being seen as a, as a tech. Want to hear what Ime Udoka, uh, Ime Udoka says about how they're going to handle this situation? Want to yeah. hear what the Celtics head coach has to say about all this? Coach, this is, on, this is NBA on ESPN Radio, how do you deal with Draymond's antics? You know, I tell guys, be who you are. If you're a guy who ignores it, ignore it. If you're a guy who confronts it, be who you are. And so with our guys, we all know that's part of the scouting report on guys, whether it's 
you know, Patrick Beverly or Green or whoever the case may be. That's part of what they do. And so you have to play through and keep your composure. Hear the full interview with Ime Udoka as part of our NBA Finals coverage on ESPN Radio. You can tune into Game 3 tonight as the Celtics host the Warriors, presented by Indeed. Coverage begins at 8 p.m. Eastern on most ESPN radio stations. Okay, yesterday we had Cedric Maxwell on the show, and he what's the first thing he said? He's like, yo, back in the 80s, dude would have got punched out. He would have got knocked out. Come on, knocked him in the face. So like, all, the all I'm saying to you, and, and just to answer your last question, Key, about what it does to the rest of the guys on the team. If you see a guy like Draymond, that right from the beginning, you initiate the action on him, instead of it being the other way around, that gives you confidence as a teammate. Because now you're saying, yeah, dude, this is our court. We dictate the tone, not you. It sends a message that resonates through the rest of your team that it gets them to buy into that moment even more. It does, you know, man. I- I, I understand you want to set the tone and certain set, set a certain level from the outset. But in the end, for me, if I got Marcus Smart, who's important to me, who's running the offense, and I gotta, I can't, I cannot afford to have him so focused in that he can't run the offense the way that he needs to. He can't play defense the way he needs to. We can do both. All of a sudden, I mean, maybe Dr- he can. Draymond I don't did, know. Draymond did both. He started but, stuff, but that's he, but but actually, Draymond. Draymond is a consistent at this. That's so why we're having Marcus a conversation. Smart. So is Marcus we, Smart. We're yeah, having a conversation about Draymond Green because of why. This is something that he does every single time. But so, but, but he, it seems to be like Udoka's point and Jay's point to me seem to be like – the, Draymond played a better game because he became more of himself in that moment, Animated. right? And Marcus Smart is the same type of cat, right? He's the same high emotional, high energy. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.